Today we're going to learn to make two different styles of coloring cards with built-in crayon holders from start to finish. These are the coloring cards that we're going to be making today. The one on the left hand side is a one piece cardstock coloring card. You have your coloring image, your text, and then you have your built-in crayon holders all in one piece. On the left hand side we have a two piece coloring card. You have your crayon holder which is the back and this is going to be your main piece and then you have your coloring image on a second piece of cardstock that we layer on top of the card itself and then as a bonus at the end of the video I will show you how to make just a shaped coloring card that you can just put a simple one crayon in let's go ahead and go to our supplies list for this tutorial you will need a silhouette cameo cutting mat inkjet printer if you have a laser printer that's fine Cardstock, any color, crayons, double sided tape, images, clip art, and text that you plan to use for your coloring images. Now we need to make the card. On your left hand toolbar, we're going to go to draw a rounded rectangle and just draw out a rounded rectangle here. The size doesn't matter because we're going to change that. After you draw out your rectangle, select it and come over to your transform panel. On your transform panel, you're going to click on the slanted arrow and open up your scale window. Width, you're going to choose 4. For height, you're going to choose 6. Click enter or apply. Your cards are going to be 4 by 6 in size. If you want your cards to be any other size, you can adjust that size in the width and height here. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to zoom in to the lower third part of our card. So in order to make sure that our crayon holders are not too close to the edge of our rounded rectangle, we, to make, we need to make sure they're about a half inch in on our card. So we're going to go to the left toolbar, choose draw a line. We're going to hold down the shift key and draw out a small line. Don't make this line too long, just draw out a small line because we're going to change the size. After you draw out your line, your line will be selected. Your transform scale window should still be open. In width, you're going to change that to 0.5. We're going to make our line a half of an inch. The height does not matter. And as you see, what it did was it changed my line to a half of an inch. Now we're going to make sure that our line is selected and we're going to select our rounded rectangle. Come back to our transform window and go back to the first selection, which is a line. And we're going to choose horizontal align to the left. And this lines up our line and our rounded rectangle together to make sure that it is straight together on the left hand side. Now what we need to do is we need to click, off, click on our mat anywhere to deselect those. Now only select our line. And we're going to go to our replicate tool, which is directly under our transform selection. And we're going to go down to where it says mirror. You have mirror down, up, left, and right. We're going to do mirror right. And we're just going to drag that over to the right hand side. It doesn't have to be exact. We'll fix that. And now you're going to select your right hand horizontal line and your rectangle. Go to your transform tool. On your align, you're going to align horizontal to the right. So now we have two horizontal lines aligned on the left and one aligned on the right. And they're both a half an inch. Now click anywhere on your mat to deselect those selections. Now let's go back to our first line that we drew. We need to make a vertical copy of this horizontal line. So we're going to go to our replicate tool and we're going to go all the way down to where it says rotate copies and choose the first selection. And if you will notice what it did is it made a vertical copy of the half inch line. And now you have what looks like to be a plus sign. Now you're going to make sure both your horizontal and vertical lines are selected and go to your transform panel and you want to go to horizontal align to the right. So we are lining up that vertical line to the right side of our horizontal line. Click anywhere on the mat to deselect those selections. And we're going to do the same thing on the right hand side. Click the horizontal line on the right hand side. 
go to replicate, rotate copy, select both lines, transform, horizontal align to the left. And now your left and right side looks like you have T's. Now what you're going to do is you're going to select both of your horizontal and vertical lines. Make sure that you do not have your rounded rectangle selected. And your transform window should still be open. Once both of those T's, as we'll call them, are selected, we're going to go to vertical align to the center. This aligns both of the T's straight across. So we know they are the same size and they are straight across and even. This sets up for us to make our crayon holders because we want our crayon holders to be a half inch in on our card. Now let's make our crayon holders. On your left hand toolbar, go to your rounded rectangle and come back to your card and draw out a rounded rectangle. You don't want to make it too long and then go back to your draw a shape and choose draw an ellipse. Hold down the shift key and draw a circle. Holding down the shift key while you are drawing draws a perfect circle. After you get done drawing your circle, it will be selected. Your transform panel is still open. Choose the second option, the slanted arrow, to open your scale window. I'm going to be using Crayola crayons, and they are the standard size. So if you are using a standard crayon of any brand, this size will be what you will need. If you are using colored pencils or markers, you will need to figure the circumference of your colored pencil or marker and adjust your circle accordingly. Do not make your circle exactly the same size as your marker or colored pencil. You want to make it slightly larger so that when your child is pulling the marker or colored pencil in and out, it does not rip the paper. So the size that we need to make this circle, the width and height for a standard crown needs to be 0.375. Change that on the width and change that on the height. And click enter or apply. Once you have adjusted the size, drag it inside of your rounded rectangle. Now when you're placing it inside of your rounded rectangle, you don't want to place it too close to the side. So make sure you give enough space there. So I'm going to pull it down just a little. Click on your rounded rectangle, and if you need to adjust the size, go ahead and do so. You'll notice on your rounded rectangle, you have two small red dots. Now, if you move around these red dots, you will notice that you can make your corners sharper or more rounded. You can move one to make them more rounded, move the other to round them a little more. I'm going to leave mine as like this. I'm going to adjust my hole, and then once I have that adjusted, I'm going to select both, and then I'm going to come back to my transform panel, go to the align section, and I'm going to do vertical align to the center so that my circle is centered in my rounded rectangle. Now, in order for this to work properly, I need to cut off some of this rounded rectangle because I do not need the whole thing to cut out. So I'm going to go to my knife tool in the left toolbar, and I'm going to cut off a little less than half of my rounded rectangle. If you hold down the shift key while you are drawing out your line, it will ensure that you have a straight line. So I'm going to cut that off, and then once that is cut off, I'm going to select it and delete it. Now this is my going to be my crayon holder. Select both pieces, right click, make compound path. Now I'm just going to drag it up here, not necessarily in place. I'm going to select my crayon holder, hold down the shift key, and select my vertical line. Now I'm going to come back to my transform panel, and I'm going to do horizontal align to the left. Now what this just did was this aligned my crayon holder with a vertical line. So this ensured that my crayon holder is a half an inch in on my card perfectly. Okay, that is the whole reason why we drew out these lines to make sure that it is uniformly a half an inch in. Okay, click anywhere on your mat to deselect your selections. Click back on your 
crayon holder only. Go to Replicate Panel. Go to Mirror to the right to make a copy of that crayon holder. Just drag it over to the right just a little. Now, now select your crayon holder and your vertical line on the right hand side. Go back to Transform. Transform a line horizontal to the right and this lines this one up with the right side vertical. So now we have two crayon holders that are aligned a half inch in on the card exactly how we need it. Now we need to make sure that these two are lined up perfectly. So we're going to click anywhere on the mat to deselect that those selections and now we're only going to select the two crayon holders. With our transform panel still open we're going to do vertical align to the center and we just line those two crayon holders up perfectly across from each other. Now while they're both still selected we're going to come over right click and make a compound path. Now the hardest part of the card is over. I know it seems really technical and once you do it the first time you can always just save your your base template and you can just pull components out. So if you make a shaped card you can just come in and pull out your crayon holders copy it and put it into another shape so you're not having to remake it over and over. If you make one shape card save your templates so that you're not having to do this over and over. I just wanted to show you the basis of making it and how to do it uniformly, okay? Now that we have everything a half inch in, we have our crayon holders a half inch in, we can go through and select our lines, hold down the shift key, select the vertical and horizontal lines, be careful not to select your crayon holders, and then just delete them. We are finished with them. Now I'm going to select the crayon holder because for this card I need two crayon holders. So with my crayon holder selected, I'm going to go to the Replicate panel. You can go to Mirror Down or Mirror Up. I'm going to go ahead and Mirror Up one. While the new mirrored copy is selected, I'm just going to take my arrow key and move it up just a little bit. As long as you use the up and down arrow keys, it will still be perfectly aligned a half an inch in. With your crayon holders, you want to make sure that they're not too close together, but you don't want them too far apart. You also do not want your crayon holders too close to the bottom of the card. Now I'm going to zoom out so you can see. My template for my card is done. If you wanted to save your template, I would do it at this point now. Before you added anything into it, go ahead and save it to your hard drive or to your library. If you need a reminder, you would go to File, Save As, Save It to Hard Drive, or Save It to Library. You would always have your template that you could pull from. Okay, for our first card, we are doing an all-in-one card where we do everything on one piece of cardstock. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to pull my design. These designs are from ScoutandRoseDesign.com. If you look in the description box below, you will find a link to her website. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with them. So anyhow, the two designs we're using today is this cute little rabbit and this llama. For tutorial purposes, I've already designed what I'm going to put on the cards. So for this first one piece, we're going to use this rabbit with the name Sarah. I'm going to copy. I'm going to pull her back over here. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put her on the card and make sure that my sizing and adjustments are good and we're good to go. Since part of this image is a coloring image, what we need to do is we need to set this up for a print and cut. So that means we need to load the cardstock that we choose for the card into our printer. Then we need to set up our mat for print and cut with registration marks. So let's do that now. We're going to go to our page setup. We are going to go to size. And we're going to choose letter, which is eight and a half by eleven. So now our light gray area is eight and a half by eleven, which reflects what size our cardstock is. Now on our page setup, we're going to go to the third option. And this is the registration marks option. Under style, we're going to click the drop-down arrow and we're going to choose type one. 
you will notice that this puts a small grid, a solid black box, and a couple of lines on your mat. Okay. Now what I do here, I don't mess with the length and the thickness adjustments. I do not mess with those. But down under that, it says position and then inset. I take that slider and I move it all the way to the right. This gives me the most room on my mat so I can fit as many cards on my mat that I, that I can. In this case, I'm only doing one, so it's not really going to help in that matter. But I do it anyhow. Now, when you're placing your items for print and cut, you do not want to place your items anywhere on the grid or anywhere past your boxes or your lines, or it will not work. So now I'm going to select my entire card, and I'm just going to move it just over some, just like that. My image is ready to be sent through the printer. As I said before, if you don't have your card stock in your printer, go ahead and do so now. When your image prints, the only thing that's going to print is your coloring image, your solid black box, and your solid black lines. This grid will not print, and your cut lines will not print, but your coloring image will. Okay, go to File, go to Print, make sure you're on, your, on the right printer. If you need to change your, if you have preferences and you need to change your ink to black and white, make sure you do so. And then click print and print out your image. I'm going to go ahead and print out my image and then we will come back and get ready for the print. Okay, now that we have our image printed out, now what we're going to do is we are going to put our, our cardstock on our mat. Make sure when you load it on your mat, you're going to load it exactly like this. Your solid black box is going to start in the corner on one, and you're going to lay it out exactly as you show right here on your virtual mat. Then once you do that, load it into your machine. Now we are ready to cut. We're going to go to send. Once you go to send, you may know that notice that your image and your text have red cut lines around it. We do not need cut lines around our coloring image or our text. So what we need to do is we need to select our coloring image and our text that we do not want cut out and we need to choose no cut. That is our coloring image so obviously we do not want it cut out. The only thing that should have cut lines is your card shape which is the rounded rectangle and our crayon holders. Okay, now you're going to go to Material. You're going to do Cardstock Plain, Action Cut. I'm using the Auto Blade. You choose whichever blade that you're using. Make sure that your cut lines for your shape and your crayon holders is on cut. I do Blade 3, Speed 4, Force Thickness 20, and 1 Pass. This is the automatic settings for Cardstock Plain and version 4.1. If yours cut on a different setting, go ahead and adjust the settings that you need. Once you have your settings the way that you need them, your mat loaded into your machine, go ahead and send that to be cut. I'm going to go ahead and send this to be cut and we will come back and design card number two. second card that we are going to design it is basically the same layout except just a tad different so we have our basic card template but this time what we want to do is we want our our main card to be one color but we want our coloring image to be on a different color so what we're going to do is we're going to go to draw a rounded rectangle and I'm going to come right here inside of my main template and I'm just going to draw out a rounded rectangle inside of the template shape. Doesn't have to be exact, you can adjust it if you need to. Don't worry about lining it up because we will go ahead and do that. Now once I have it the way I want it, I'm going to select both the template and 
the rectangle we just drew. Go to transform, go to align, horizontal align, so that way my rounded rectangle is straight in center with my main card template. Now my coloring image is going to go on the inside of this rounded rectangle. So let's go and grab our design for this. And this time we are going to be using the llama. So I'm going to select, right click, copy, drag him over, and I'm going to just drag him right in here. Make adjustments as you need. And you can see if you need to make, you know, any adjustments or whatever. This looks perfect to me. Now my card is finished. So what I need to do is I need to print my coloring image. Now we're going to set our page up with registration marks to get ready to be printed. Make sure that your printer is loaded with a cardstock you want your coloring image printed on. Go ahead, go to File, Print, and print out your coloring image. Now that your coloring image is printed out, now we need to cut out that image. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load that cardstock onto our mat, put it into our machine, and then we're going to go to send. At this time, the only thing that we need to cut out is our inner rectangle. So you may have cut lines for everything, your coloring image, your text, the main card template and all. So we need to cut all cut settings off except for the inner rectangle. So I'm going to select my main card template, hold down shift, select my text, and I'm going to choose no cut for those. Now the only thing with cut lines is my inner rectangle. That's the only thing I need cut out of this cardstock. My cardstock is loaded on my mat into my machine, and now my settings are cardstock plain, cut, auto blade, blade three, speed four, force or thickness 20, and one pass. Now I'm going to get my machine on and go ahead and send that through to be cut. Now that you have cut your coloring image out, now the only thing we need to do is to cut out our main card. Whatever card stock you want to use for your main card, Go ahead and load that on your mat. If you need to adjust where your card is sitting on your virtual mat, go ahead and do so. Load your mat into your machine. And then we're going to go to send. Now, the only thing that should have cut lines now is your inner rectangle, but we've already cut that out. So now we need to select it and choose no cut. Now we need to select our main card and choose cut because that is the only thing that needs to cut at this point is our main card. Make sure your card stock's loaded on your mat. Your mat is loaded into your machine. You have your cut lines on your main card template and your settings are card stock plain, cut, auto blade or blade of your choice, blade three, speed four, force or thickness 20 and one pass. I'm going to go ahead and send that through and we will come back and I will show you how to do the little shaped crayon cards. Okay, just a little bonus, but I just wanted to show y'all. You can make these coloring cards out of any shapes. Just take a simple shape, trace the edge, size it to the size that you need. This one, I've, this heart I've made pretty large. It's a little over seven inches wide and a little over six inches tall. I took a copy of my crayon holder from our template before. I have my text here. And with my text, which we didn't cover in the first one because I already had those designed, when you type out your text or you have your coloring images, in order to get them into a coloring stage, what you need to do, this has on my red outline. I'm going to change the red outline to black and then I'm going to change, let me close that. Then I'm going to change the point to two point. This thickens up the line. So now that is a coloring image. 
Now I'm just going to add a cute little arrow underneath her name. You can adjust the size of any of your elements that you see fit. I'm going to also make that a coloring image, so I'm going to change it to black. And I'm going to change the point to two point. And now I've made the name and the arrow into a coloring image. Now I would do this the same as I did the very first card that we did. I would take it and when I'd set it up as a print and cut, I'd set this up on an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, print out my coloring image, put on my mat and cut out the card. I'm going to go ahead and set this up, print it out, cut out my card, and we will meet back at the craft table so we can assemble these coloring cards. And now we have everything cut out and on our craft table. And these are the supplies that we'll need. Obviously, we need our cut out cards. You need a glue stick or double sided tape to assemble your two piece card. And you need some crayons. I'm using Crayola crayons today. This is the first card that we designed. This is what it looks like when you pull it off the mat. The only thing you need to do is pull up your flaps and gently bend upward. Bend upward and then bend back. Do this on both crayon holders and then you will take your crayons, the crayons of your choice, slide them in the crayon holder and we are done. A simple one piece coloring card that you can use for birthday favors, holidays, or get togethers. Very simple. Now this is our two-piece card, where we cut the coloring image out on one card stock, and then we cut our main card out of a different color. So what we need to do here is either apply glue or double stick tape to the back. I'm just going to take two strips of double-sided tape and just lay them on the back of the card. And then I'll take my card and just line it up with however I want the coloring image to sit press down and my coloring image is on my main card. Now I need to fold in my crayon holders, insert your crayons, and now for the one piece shaped coloring card all you do is fold in your crayon holders and insert your crayon. And that's it. You're good to go. You have three options. You have a one-piece coloring card. You have a two-piece coloring card. You can do shape coloring cards. And the possibilities are endless. You can use you can use text. You can use images. It's just a matter of what you what you decide you want to do with your cards. So I hope that you have learned something new today and if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to leave those in the comments below or message me anytime on our Crafty Chaotic Live Facebook page. We'd love for you to share your creations on our Crafty Chaotic Live Facebook group. I appreciate you joining me today and I hope to see you again soon. Happy crafting!